Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to ATM Spellbound. Uh, so since the last episode, I have been just doing some work around the base. Uh, this little area, I turned this into kind of like a little, a little potion making area. We'll have a bigger potion room, I'm sure, but uh, I just, I needed something to go in here. So I was like, well, this could be a little potion nook uh, that then leads on into our Malum area. Uh, so I went ahead and set up that. I'm trying to work on room by room and try to get things decorated. Uh, and then back in here, I have turned this into a library. Now, this is actually an Arcane Edelwood. We haven't gotten into that, but I can use the alchemy table to make that. So not really bypassing progression, but I wanted the block uh, for that. So, uh, But anyways, we have the first floor of the library, which is just kind of going to be general enchanted books. Um, as well as you know, some of this stuff. Um, and then just kind of decorated this out and tried to bring this all together. I uh, also started plotting out kind of where steps are going to go, which this is really in the way right now. Um, all this create stuff needs to go, uh, but we're going to be working on that, of course, starting today. Uh, also started bringing out some windows and things. And, uh, hey. But start bringing out some windows and things, and uh, if we head upstairs, where these steps are going to come up, uh, you can also see that this staircase leads up to the library at this point, um, to the second floor of the library. I think it's going to be like three floors, maybe, uh, with the third floor being a bit bigger. These are kind of all the same size. Uh, deal with him just in case. Uh, but you can see I've started plotting out some rooms here and things. Uh, where these kind of come up and uh, then over here I don't think I'm actually going to keep this design I've been I've been back and forth with how I'm going to lay out create in our first power system you can see there's something there I scrapped that and then I was like well I'll move it over here and then I scrapped that and I think we're gonna we're gonna switch things up because I wasn't happy with either of these layouts because they felt kind of forced because uh, we were going to do these big like windmill kind of turbine type things try to make them look a little bit magic-y They'll be fine for a, new, a different area, but I feel like they're really short and fat uh, in these areas, and I want something more tall and cylindrical. And it doesn't really work out in either of these rooms. Uh, so we're actually going to scrap this and all this. So uh, this floor, this room is just going to be... Oh man. This floor is just going to be... Or this room is just going to be for our create stuff uh, is all kind of the create process stuff so uh, but anyways we are going to delve right in we're going to start into create today um, I imagine it's probably going to span two episodes getting uh, our create stuff moved over realistically because we've got a lot of setup stuff but we also have a bit of progression related stuff with create uh, to go ahead and push through uh, so anyways what we are going to do first and foremost there's two things that we're going to want for our create system. First up, we're going to want an empty blaze burner. And on that same note, we're also going to need to get, uh, oh, I didn't need that. But we're also going to need to get a mixer as well. So there's that. Um, and that way we can start making brass. Of course, we do have to get a blaze in there. That's not gonna take but a second. Um, and then we are also going to have to get kelp. You know, uh, that's a lot of what limited us before is because we did not have the kelp to make the dried kelp. So we are gonna set out for both of those things. They shouldn't take long because we have the broom and we do have a nether fortress. Uh, so I'm gonna pop into the overworld first. We'll go out for the kelp. You know, we found an ocean that shouldn't take long. And we're just gonna pop over to the distant north village because that's pretty close to the ocean actually. And then we'll head down towards the ocean. Because I think it's just, uh, yeah, it's a little ways, but... And then we can set this waystone up in the nether. That way we can quickly teleport to the nether fortress. Grab our blaze. And then we'll be all set as far as what we need to go out and find. Uh, I'm going to gather up a bit of kelp, though, because... I don't have a place set up just yet for us to farm it. No big deal. Uh, but we'll just grab a few stacks of it. Okay, so right here... We'll just start vein mining this up. That way we can make sure we've got plenty of kelp for what we're going to be doing. We're also going to be setting up uh, 
ore smelting, you know, uh, since we can't do the ore uh, <laughs> processing times 12 that we were originally planning on doing, uh, we are going to set up some ore smelting. We're just going to be doing that with Create. Basically the same way that we've been doing it, except uh, involving some occultism, uh, demons, and then um, some conveyor belts and things. So that's a bunch of kelp. That should be good, honestly. And let's see, the kelp, I can smelt that with the, well, bulk smoking, not bulk blasting. Okay. That's fine. I might make a small adjustment because I'm not going to need any limestone right this second. Alright. We'll just do nether entrance. And we're going to pop over to the we're going to pop over to the nether fort. Alright. So all we have to do is just find ourselves a blaze. Right click it. There we go. Quest complete. And advancement made. So then let's pop back home. Do any of these quests give rewards by chance? Um, I'm going to wait to turn these in, of course. I've been building up a lot of XP. Having that spawner down there, I've been building up a lot of XP. Uh, we got 113 levels at the moment, which I did just a little bit of enchanting. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good for sure. So initially, of course, we're going to have to set up our mixer uh, over here, I suppose. And we're going to get ourselves a basin. Uh, the basin is going to set right in here and right underneath it we're going to have our blaze burner which is going to power that uh, now we are going to have to heat it up and that's fine but let's go ahead if we take a look at brass it is a combination of where are you at mixer there we go uh zinc and copper okay now zinc is actually something that we never added to our occultism area so we're going to add that to our transporter and that way he can start running this over. So we're processing the zinc now. And we'll just get all this smelted up. And then we should be good. I'm doing uh, two stacks of the dust for now. It's going to be overkill at the moment. But, uh, you know, down the road, maybe. It'll be useful to have it. So, uh, Also, while I'm over here, let me go ahead... Let me just pull up this water for right now. And let me switch this out for netherrack. And that way we can do some smoking. And then we can just toss our kelp in right there and get that smoking. And that way we can get dried kelp. And that should be good for right now. We're going to have uh, two stacks of kelp also. We'll probably end up uh, or do we? No, we have two stacks and 16. What in the world? How do you see me from way over there? It must be because I've noticed the, uh, I've noticed the boots need like a reset. In order to work. So, if I go like across the dimension or something. All right, so we're going to start off with some zinc and some copper. So there we go. And then what we can do is, uh, well, this actually isn't going to work. <laughs> I actually need a cog for this. Um, let's see. Probably leave it here, though. And we'll just go ahead and get a couple gearboxes. And we'll just run this back. And there we go. That way the mixer can activate up. Now we're going to have to heat our uh, blaze burner. Let's just grab ourselves some coal. We're going to right click that and that's going to... Okay, it's not rotating with enough speed. That's the problem. We're going to have to boost up the speed. Um, so what we're going to do for that, let's get ourselves these large cog wheels and some small cog wheels. Um, because right now we're not doing enough speed for this to actually work and that's fine uh, might be able to put it in here so let's clip off this and let's put that right there and you can see now we've got enough speed because we've oh my gosh because we have sped this up 
Um, you know, we've talked about this in previous series, but a large cog wheel spinning on a cog on a small cog wheel, same speed, um, or you know, this specific speed, the the large one is going to turn at you know however many rotations per minute, uh, but the smaller one, due to less surface area, of course, is going to spin faster. It's going to make a rotation faster, uh, and that's going to increase our overall rotations uh, per minute through that given line after this point, if that makes sense. So um, basically just going from a larger surface area, moving an X speed to a smaller surface area, which is receiving that speed, but basically causing it to spin faster. So, uh, so this is going to be working. It's going to be crafting up our brass at this point. Um, and I put in a half stack of each. <clears throat> Uh, so we'll just give this a little bit. It's going to take a little while for our brass to craft up. And we want to make sure that our blaze burner keeps burning. So we'll throw in just a little bit more coal into that. All right. So now that that's crafting up, now that we've got brass coming in, um, at this point what we can do, we can turn our attention over to this area. And of course, it's raining. Um, let's go ahead and get ourselves... For starters, let's get more shafts because I know we're going to end up needing those. Uh, and then let's go ahead and get ourselves some mechanical belts because I know we're going to need those. Um, and then let's also get, let's see, I can't remember, are brass funnels upgraded or no, they take the electron tubes. Okay. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some of these. And I know we're going to be using these a little bit today. Uh, so we'll get a few of them and then uh, let's see. It's going to be the brass and that. Let me go ahead and get some redstone torches also. And then let's go ahead and get some sandpaper. And the way this works, of course, you can do this a couple different ways. You can drop it on the ground and right click it. And you can see that we got polished rose quartz. You can also do one in your off hand, one in your main hand. And just run those together. Um, let me go ahead and get more sandpaper. And we got ourselves 10 polished rose quartz. And okay, how's this brass doing? It is done. If we take a look here, we got ourselves a stack of brass. And that should be sufficient for a while, so we'll just leave this be. We're not going to need this set up, I don't think, uh, for a bit. And now that we've got our brass, if we take a look at the mechanical crafter, because I know at least a few things that we're going to have to craft with this in the crushing wheel, we're going to need a total of 21 of these. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some mechanical crafters. Looks like I'm going to be missing most everything. Oh yeah, we're going to need some brass sheets. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn 16 of our brass into brass sheets, and we'll give that a minute to craft up. Uh, and then I think beyond that, well, I probably will need to make some more small cog wheels. Okay, so there is our brass sheet. Okay, and then we can get our brass casings. There's that. And we can get our first mechanical crafters. This will be enough for a minute. We're going to have to make a few more for our grindstones, but uh, this will be good for a moment. And then what we're going to do, of course, is just run these out. We're actually going to be setting one out up right here. And we will get all this moved, I promise. But I don't have power up there, and I don't want to go with water wheels up there, so... <laughs> This is how we're going to do it for just a moment. Uh, now, if we wanted to make flywheels, for example, uh, we need... Oh, actually, we need one more of these, don't we? Put one right here. Uh, but if we want to make flywheels, for example, we need a layout like this uh, with the brass casing and then the brass that runs around right there. Uh, and let me go ahead and get another craft of brass casings. And the very first thing that we are going to be making is going to be the flywheel. Um, so you're going to notice these little arrows, of course. I think all of this is probably pretty straightforward at this point. But we're going to just, let's see, lay this out here, here, here. And then the, the finished item will pop out that side. Uh, but if we put our brass casing there and we put our brass around like this, it's going to start crafting. All that stuff's going to start coming together. 
And once everything reaches this spot, then it's going to pop off. And we're going to get our very first flywheel. So there we go. Woo. And then we're going to go ahead, for right now, we're going to make one more of these. Flywheels are one of my favorites. I like flywheels and windmills a lot. The water wheels are kind of meh. You know, that's what we started with. Uh, we probably won't be using them much. Uh, you know, I mentioned back then, they're not my favorite thing in the world. But uh, they'll do the trick temporarily. And it would be something that we could set up and then we never have to touch again. And at least that way we've done one. Uh, but there we go. We got a couple flywheels. And of course, flywheels, the way they work is they attach to a furnace. And these can attach to a furnace. And when that furnace runs, it generates power. Now, it's important with a flywheel to make sure that, of course, you have some method for constantly generating power. But some of the stuff that we did last episode uh, is perfect for that. So we are going to be going with that method, I do believe. Now, another thing that we're going to definitely be needing is brass funnels. Uh, so let's go ahead and at least get a couple crafts of these. Like I'm thinking uh, eight to start with will be good. That's going to put us in a pretty good spot. And then we're going to go ahead and do two rituals. First up, we're going to do the one for the foliate transporter. And then we're going to do one for the wormhole frame. So uh, go ahead and get these running. Uh, and that way, because we're going to be using a foliate and we're also going to be using a wormhole today. Uh, probably, well, in part two, we'll definitely use some more foliates. But I think today, just one foliate. And then we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a blood infusion core. And we're going to get ourselves another blood infuser. And then let's go ahead and get ourselves a block of diamonds. And let's get a bowl of promises. What did I do with my other one? Actually, I think it's in there at the moment, but that's fine. I'll just get another one. That's fine. Uh, okay, we did get our Foley out, so we're going to go ahead and grab him. I'm going to have to put a, a sound filter on that, I think. Because I can hear those skeletons all over the place. And there we go. There is our stable wormhole. Now, in addition, we are going to want to get uh, some furnace engines, which is a 3x3 three three craft with the mechanical crafters. Uh, so let's just put one in right there. That's fine, honestly. Uh, we're going to put on a lever right there just so that we can activate this with some redstone. And this is going to be piston here. And... brass casing in the center and then we're going to have our brass around we're going to be making two of these one for each flywheel of course we're going to hit that with some redstone that way this goes ahead and starts crafting but if we decide to make more flywheels we don't have to rebuild it because we've got that right there oh is that not uh it's brass ingots there whoops i was like wait a second why isn't this right all right so that's running now and we should end up with our furnace this time there we go and we'll get one more of these crafted up. A little bit of setup today, but we're almost we're almost there. Okay, so now uh, I think we're going to need a couple more things, but we can go ahead and get started with our setup and then just make a few things. Um, that's pretty much all of the create progression that we're going to be doing today. We'll be making a grindstone, but most of the create progression is done once you have the mixer, the metal press, and... Um, the blaze burner and stuff you're pretty much done with progression uh, another thing we're actually going to be needing is a deployer uh so let's get that and we're also going to want in addition one other thing uh, a mechanical drill i know i will need these things so there we go and we're completing a bunch of quests oh it looks like uh this one we get sandpaper from this right here would be the center of the room uh, so what we're going to do right here is we're going to put in our stable wormhole right there. Uh, and then we're going to come out uh, just a couple blocks. We're going to say right here, honestly, is fine. Uh, and we'll make a little like pedestal for this. But we're going to put in our blood infuser right there. And then we're going to put in our promise of tenacity. And what we're going to be doing, let's set up our foliate real quick. He's going to set right in here. Uh, we are going to... We're going to say set deposit. 
and then he's going to be depositing things into there and we're going to say set extract uh, and before we do that let's oh wait i never link this 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 is set extract we're going to click right there so he's going to be extracting from there and then we'll go ahead and just open him up and we're going to be setting a whitelist for bones so he's going to be moving bones over uh, oh yeah and this is going to be side specific right so oops he's extracting from there set deposit and he's depositing there uh, so the bones are going to get dropped into our blood infuser and these bones are basically they're going to get crafted down oh yeah because i don't have any blood in this at the moment <laughs> not really and you can see for the cost of 2500 blood we make blaze rods all right now what we're going to do in order to move our blood up we are going to make ourselves a entangled chalice we're gonna need a gas tier uh, i think one of these for right now will be fine and we'll be making some more of these fairly soon but let's go ahead toss that in there Boom. and this setup will probably end up making some productivity some productivity promises that way we can just cut down the amount of blood that we're using but uh, and then maybe a couple maybe one speed to productivity for this setup i think um, just because speed's not gonna going to be super important for us and uh, productivity will be a bit more useful for us so actually i need this recipe here there we go and you can see the group is Klaatu, Nick to Bless. Uh, if you want to do additional ones that are part of the same group, you're going to use this recipe. Uh, otherwise, this recipe to make a new group uh, for this. And let's switch our tank here for an Entangled Chalice. And let's just put our Entangled Chalice right in here. And you're going to see the blood's going to start going up. Because it's taking that blood uh, that's being generated down there. It's taking it and it's feeding it into here. And that way we've just got constant blood coming over from, uh, you know, this area. And we can start feeding it into our machines using uh, this Klaatu Niktu Bless line. Uh, and we'll make some other adjustments to it later, but uh, that way we can start moving these things. So we'll just put a, a hopper going down. And that's going to start pulling the blaze rods out. And then what we're going to do is uh, we'll put in our mechanical belt line using our shafts that's going to go from here it's going to come out to uh, just say right here like that and then what we'll do is we'll put in another shaft line here that will then bring it up like that uh, and then what we're going to do is let's see let's get ourselves brass tunnel can we make these two at the moment let me get another one of these and what we're going to do is we're going to have our brass tunnel uh we're going to have one i'm gonna to have to bring it out just a little bit that's fine uh so we'll bring it out to say here it's going to be a bunch of short little uh segments but i just kind of want to straighten this out a little bit so we'll do like that and then we're going to have our brass tunnel setting here and we're going to have another one yeah it can set here and then we're going to have another line that sets right here. Uh, just like that. And then we're going to have a line that comes out here. A line that comes out here. And we're going to bring our brass tunnels out like that. And we're going to leave it on when multiple outputs available. Uh, just split it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in these two. We're going to put blaze rods. So it's going to split those blaze rods between those two. And over here, we're just going to put like Gabbro cobblestone or something. You know, something, because we don't want it to actually go out this. Uh, but basically, whenever items come into this, they're going to split between uh, these two different conveyors. And then this is going to come out and go onto these conveyors. Uh, these conveyors are going to come over and they're going to be plugging into a furnace. And the furnace... Uh, we're actually going to bring these over to there. So this is going to run just like this and just like this. And then at this point, they're going to be plugging into furnaces. And these furnaces are going to be setting right in here. 
and right in here. And we'll put our funnel in here and our funnel in here. And we're going to be saying that you're going to take blaze rods and you're going to take blaze rods. And then from here, we're going to attach our furnace engine. And this is going to run... We want to run back or forward. Uh, let's run it back, I think. So we'll have that. And we'll have that. Because if we have them coming this way, they're going to kind of be weirdly placed, I think, for this. And then we're going to come out one block to right here. And that's when we're going to put in our flywheel. And you could say uh, the flywheel, basically it'll connect. You'll see this stuff that comes across. And this is where uh, our kinetic power is going to come out once this is running. And then we're going to do the same thing over on this side. And I want it to connect. I want it to basically go this way because I want the power to come in right there. Once the furnaces start running, then this will start generating power. And then what we need to do is just kind of plug all this up and make sure that it's going in the correct direction. Uh, what I'm probably going to do is, uh, let me just run one of these for just a moment. Uh, so if we throw in a little bit of cobblestone and a piece of coal, you can see this is going to start spinning up. And actually the direction that it's running in at the moment is pretty good. So we're going to run this out to here. No, not to here. To, well, actually to here would be fine. Uh, and then what we can do is just run our mechanical belt. See, we've already ran through all of our mechanical belts. We're going to do it like that. And now you can see that all of these are starting to spin up. Um, then what we can do is let's run out shaft here. And then we're going to run out... I guess a shaft right here. And let's go ahead and get some more mechanical belts. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. And now it's going to start pulling those blaze rods out. And you're going to see they're going to start getting split off. One comes here, one comes there. Uh, and then we just need to start running this up. Well, actually, we're starting to build up a decent amount of blaze rods at the moment. Um, but the furnace smelting is what gives this power. You can see it just finished up and this kind of winded down at this point. Uh, now to get this to flow over correctly, I'm going to need either a double gearbox or... Well, I'll tell you what, a double gearbox actually will work out well enough for us. Uh, so I'm just going to set up a double gearbox here. And of course, anytime kinetic power goes through a gearbox, it's going to reverse it on the opposite side. It's going to reverse the uh, direction that it's spinning. That's why we're going with the double, basically just so we can get it back to where it was while still while still turning uh, our power around. So we're going to go here and then we're also going to uh, and then we will have to connect this up and so the way we're going to do that is just like so. Or actually I tell you what, let's do vertical gearbox here. Uh, so the power is still going to come through right there and that way we can bring the power up anyways from here if we want to do some stuff. Uh, so we'll do it like that and that way this doesn't connect and what we can do is run this across right here. Uh, oops. I can just use the wrench to rotate it but uh, we'll do that and that. That. Okay, so now if we were to fire this up, this should be totally running at this point. So let's grab eight of those, piece of coal, and you can see the blaze rods are now making their ways, their way up to the furnaces uh, where they're going in. And blaze rods, of course, they will smelt 12 items. Uh, so we're going to be using the bones that are coming from the evil craft system because we're generating a lot of them. We're going to be using these bones to make blaze rods to then power our create system that's up here. Uh, and then our little foliate guy can just handle just moving this. We're going to we're going to have a few foliate guys. They're going to be kind of like our our workshop staff, if you will. <clears throat> okay, so the blaze rods are coming in. That part of it's all set up. Now we just have to handle. Uh, what it's actually going to be smelting and we're going to be using for now um, 
we're going to be using just a, a recycling system. That way we don't have to worry about it stopping running something, you know. Okay, and then we're going to dig this down. I've got a little bit of space between floors so I can have some stuff kind of go down a little bit here. Uh, we're going to dig this down. Let's see. It's going to get made there. Actually, it's going to get made right here. Uh, let's open this up. All this floor is going to get fixed up. Um, but we're going to put in our mechanical drill setting here. We'll put a hole in right there. And then right below this, it's actually going to be right down to the bottom of the floor there. Oops. We're going to put a shaft in. Well, let me just grab my wrench. We're going to put a, a shaft in right there, and we're going to put a shaft in, we will do it right here, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is going to kind of come out <clears throat> to this point, and basically this shaft is just going to be bringing items up at this point, and then I think what we'll do, since the door is over there, we're going to run it off in this direction, um, and then the mechanical drill, which is coming out the back side here. Gotta love how these things just collect everything that, <laughs> that's anywhere near them. Uh, let me get a few more shafts. We're gonna bring this out. Uh, honestly, probably just grab one of these gearboxes. The mechanical drill, it doesn't really matter which direction it spins. Uh, so we can have that going pretty much anywhere. Uh, and of course we can speed all this up with cogwheels, but it's going to be plenty fast for our needs, I think. Uh, so we're not going to worry about that right now, at least. Uh, so we're going to run that out, and we are going to run out a belt here. And that way it powers our mechanical drill. Uh, so once this starts up, then it's going to start breaking that cobblestone. And that cobblestone should, uh, the way mechanical belts like to grab everything, uh, and it should grab the cobblestone without having to worry about the lava getting it. And the lava can't burn the mechanical belt, so that works out. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we'll make sure that we can kind of get through this room to everything, but yeah. And we're going to have this setting here, and then we're going to come over like this. It'll make sense here in just a second. And then we'll run this up. Now, originally I had, I made some brass funnels, another craft of brass funnels, uh, or tunnels, not funnels, tunnels, <laughs> uh, because I was going to have this split off and go up both sides kind of equally, uh, but I don't think I'm actually going to do that. So, and this room's going to have some pretty high ceilings, so, but we're going to run it to about right here. And then we are going to split this off. Now I'm going to put a hopper. Oops. I'm going to put a hopper setting right here. Yeah, we'll have the hopper feed down like that. Um, and so that way the cobblestone from this will go up and around. Go up to these hoppers and get fed down. Now, if we have a block in the way of this uh, so that it can't go any further... It will actually stop up the line and then the cobblestone will just kind of build up on this line. That's what we want to do. We want to set that up. Um, this will be a different block, but for now, the cobblestone will get stopped here. Uh, so if it's not going down in this hopper, then it will get stopped up. Now, if this hopper is still collecting things, uh, then this part of it will still run. Um, but basically from here over, will get stopped up. And then if this one gets stopped up, the stuff can still progress on. And that way we don't have to worry about... Uh, the cobblestone getting wasted or getting stopped up anywhere. Now what we're going to do, let's go ahead. Yeah, we don't have framed drawers in this version, do we? I think we're just going to go with spruce. Uh, in this case, we're going to be doing just a little bit with drawers today. Um, and in this setup, and we don't have compressed cobblestone in this pack, so we're just going to be making just a normal drawer. We're going to put this in right here. And this is going to store cobblestone. That way we kind of have like an excess amount stored up in here. And then we're going to have a brass funnel setting here. We're going to have a brass funnel setting here. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a drawer key. 
That way we can just lock this in to make sure only cobblestone's going in. Uh, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and get ourselves a void upgrade also. Uh, so any excess cobblestone can get voided. Uh, originally, I was planning on making just a closed system where the cobblestone gets broken. That's why I made the deployer. But I figured, well, if I'm going to be doing this, I might as well make smooth stone in the process. So we're going to be making smooth stone also. Uh, so that should be fine. Uh, and then that way the cobblestone gets sent up. Uh, it'll get sent up to here. We've still got to run all the, uh, the shafts and stuff. We'll get to that. The cobblestone will go up here and it's going to get smelted. We should have just a constant flow of cobblestone coming through. Now at this point, we're going to set up uh, see, shafts. Let's do a line that comes out here. And it's going to come out to... Say here. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Create, you always end up with just belts everywhere. But trying to, trying to keep them kind of clean so that we can move around in this room with ease but having to go over the mechanical belts and stuff. Of course, you can cover those, and we'll probably end up covering some. But uh, And then let's go ahead and get ourselves... I made up some more kelp, so let's get some more mechanical belts. Let's just go with as many as we can make. 21 sounds good. Uh, this is going to come over like so. And then the same thing over on this side. Then we'll just have to plug all this up uh, to make sure it works. Actually, instead of having it like this, let me just break this off. And we're just going to go with a 2 by one drawer instead of a one by one That way we can just have everything in the same block space. Because uh, we can add storage upgrades to this. And we're going to be feeding some of this stuff into our system just a little bit later. Um, we have a couple things that I want to tackle and then we're going to be... Um, getting into actually limiting things that go into our system because something like this with it running across the entire pack uh, you know eventually we're going to reach a point where we're going to have just a ton of cobblestone and stone getting piled up in the system if we're not careful uh, so we're going to be limiting stuff that's automatic like this uh, we're going to be limiting the amount of it that's getting fed into our storage system because we don't want it to get just piled up and bulked up um, so we'll get into that just a little bit later, but uh, since we're doing this, we will have to limit this side and say only cobblestone can come out of this. But okay, this comes over. Uh, we're going to bring this up, and this is going to come up. Uh, well, really, it doesn't even have to. No, we don't even have to do that. Because what we can do instead is we can bring this over to here. I was going to have it come up and go over the top, but no, we don't even have to do that because we have this belt that's sitting right over here and we can just dump the items from this belt and they'll just they'll just come over and get dumped onto this mechanical belt and go up and get stored just the same as everything else so the stone will just come across and we'll put hoppers right there that way they can collect the stone and put it onto this conveyor line now i need to plug this one up to this line uh, so we're going to do that real quick and these are also going to get, for next episode, these, some of these are going to get siphoned off uh, and go into some other places too. So we'll get into that uh, here soon. Let me put that out. We're not going to be using this area anymore. I'm happy to say, and that means I can start cleaning up that area uh, between episodes because it's kind of at the point now where it's getting in my way, like really, really bad. Uh, so I do want to get rid of that. Uh, so this is going to have to get reversed. I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring it over to here. Then it's going to go into a gearbox. Uh, vertical is what I want. And then we'll plug that up. So there we go. That part is done and the breaker should be running. Uh, we just have to start moving the items up from that breaker. Uh, if we plugged up a... That's perfect, yeah. And that way it can start moving those items. It's reversing the line, of course, there. And then we need to move these items. What we're going to do is run this out. And we're going to run this out. Grab our mechanical belts. And boom. Now you can see that the stone from this is now getting moved along through here. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. 
like so. There we go, and I think everything now is plugged up except for the breaker in this top section. And that's just piling up. You can see it's dumping it onto this conveyor, but we gotta get this conveyor moving. It's actually kind of nice saying goodbye to uh, that water wheel system. I, I hate water wheel. I wish the water wheels were a little bit more impressive uh, within Create. They're kind of dinky, to be honest, but... No, I don't want you to go that way. We'll put a shaft in here, and then we'll do a vertical gearbox, and then that way it can uh, it can move that, and then I can bring a lineup on this side, and it'll kind of make it look a little bit more balanced if there's a shaft coming up on this side instead of it being really lopsided like it is now. So at this point, we can actually start generating cobblestone. Uh, so you can see cobblestone coming up, and this is coming from the... Uh, the mechanical drill that we've got down there. Um, yeah, there it comes. Might need to speed that up, honestly. Maybe do some cog wheels. We'll probably do that here in just a second because it's kind of slow at the moment. Uh, it might be fast enough to keep up, but I would feel a little bit more comfortable if we had just a little bit more speed to that. And actually right here, uh, what we're going to do to get this line up here moving, is we're going to put a shaft in it. Well, no, I'm not going to be able to right there, am I? Let me pull that off. Uh, we could do the shaft setting here, though. So we'll run that out, and then we're going to have a shaft that comes out right here, and then the mechanical belt brings that over. So that's got that line running, and then we just have to plug up this. And then we can just put a gearbox in right here run a shaft out, run a shaft out, and then our mechanical belts. There's a few other tools that we could use to move that, but I think that's going to be our best bet. And then we can just do this. And then everything should be running at this point. So you can see, well, let me jump start it one last time here. We throw that into there. You can see actually blaze rods we are backed up on at the moment. Uh, but this is going to start moving the cobblestone over. And, of course, it's going to get deposited into this furnace where it's going to start smelting up. But I do think we're going to have to upgrade the speed of the mechanical drill. It's way too slow at the moment. And, of course, once again, the direction of the mechanical drill, it's not actually important to us. So what we're going to do, let's come in. That needs to be over. One more. We're going to put that there. We're actually going to clip this off at this point. We don't actually need that. And we're going to put in a small cog wheel here. Okay, and that's going to speed the break up speed, or the break speed of this. And so if we come around now, we should see cobblestone coming up at a little bit faster rate. Yeah. And honestly, I think that might end up being fast enough. Uh, this is one of those things we're going to have to let run for just a little bit to see for sure. Um might let this run for a minute while I edit some footage and we can just kind of see. We might have to speed it up just a little bit more, get a little bit more brake speed on that. Uh, now, really, really quickly, before we cut for just a minute, let me go ahead at this point, I think, and let me get, just so we can kind of monitor our system, let's get a speedometer. And then let's go ahead and get a stress meter. And, well, I need two speedometers. So we'll just have a vertical gearbox then. It takes that, and then we can say, uh, oh yeah, we never made our goggles, did we? Okay, so let's get our engineer's goggles. So there's that. Quest complete. Did I have quests behind that? Yeah, actually. Uh, these. It's okay, I mean, we're going to end up making more, but let's go ahead and just grab it. Because we can. And then we'll just set that back up. Okay, so if we throw this on, we can now say that our stress... Um, we are barely using anything, only 3% of our system. Our stress is low, so we still have 15,808 stress units out of 16,384. So we're not using a whole lot of stress on our system compared to what we're generating. Flywheels actually generate a lot of uh, stress units. And pretty decent speed, of course, you can speed that up with cogs, you know. And we take a look at our speed at 16 RPM on this line. Of course, the line that 
has the breaker is going to be doubled. Um, so it's going to be running at a 32 speed at the moment. And if we buff it up again, it's going to be like 64 uh, rotations per minute. So that should be sufficient. If we take a look, we are at 57. Is this still getting cobblestone? No, it stopped at this point. Uh, but once this one fills up, it'll be interesting to see if it can keep up while still producing. I, th I think I may have to speed it up one more time. Okay, I made some adjustments to this. Um, for starters, I, I did a little bit of cleaning up and moved our speedometer and stressometer. Nothing major there. Um, but a couple things that I did do. Uh, first up, if you look down there, you'll actually notice a funnel right there. Um, I noticed that I was getting some cobblestone kind of piling up. And if we come down, you can see there's an ender hopper. It's actually attached to a drawer that has cobblestone locked in because I had, I noticed a little bit of cobblestone piling up. Uh, when I went down there, it was like a little over a stack. You know, it was still pumping out cobblestone, um, but it, a little bit was getting piled up there. and I don't want to waste it. So I've just got an ender hopper that collects any cobblestone that gets stuck um, on the sides of the conveyors. And then that funnel just feeds it up, uh, you know, this line here up to here. Now you'll notice that this is completely backed up at the moment. Um, I did bump up the speed a little bit. Uh, so where we had our original one, um, I went ahead and moved the cog over to that side instead, brought it out to a large one, to a small one, to a large one, to a small one, and then it comes back in. Uh, and that way our breaker runs very, very quickly. Um, because we are going to be using cobblestone for some other stuff. And I figure, well, instead of doing another breaker system, we'll just set it up like that. And that way we've got plenty of speed coming through here. Uh, now, in addition, I did go ahead and make the promises of productivity as well as uh, the rest of them that we needed down there. And at the moment now, because I'm not noticing that we need speed. Um, you take a look here. and I mean, this is starting to back up on blaze rods. We've got plenty of them. So I don't think we actually need speed for up here. And with the three stacks of promises of productivity, it takes us less than 400 millibuckets of blood to, cr to create a blaze rod. So it's down from 2,500 to like 346 or 336, I think it is, per craft. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good at the moment. Um, also, I did, you'll notice my inventory is just full of junk. I cleaned up all this stuff down here, and I did go ahead and craft up some more... Uh, mechanical crafters because we're going to be using these come next episode. I'm going to be kind of just cleaning this stuff up, putting it back in, but I'm going to be putting it up here and that way we can clean up this whole area and the water wheels can go and I can get all this junk out of the way so that I can actually build uh, this area of the building. So, um, But beyond that, it's all set up pretty much the exact same. Everything's running really, really good now that I bumped up the speed and we have more than enough cobblestone and stone coming in. Unfortunately, this pack, of course, we can't see how much is in our drawers, but uh, I imagine it's a lot. So, And like I said, here pretty soon, we're actually going to start feeding some cobblestone and stone and keeping it stocked within our system. Um, but we don't have the stuff in place that I need for that, so we're going we're gonna to hold out on that just a little bit. Also, I did add another door over here because I think instead of having you go through the machines, I think you're going to come out and go around the machines to this back side. So... Um, kind of this little like work area um, and then we're going to have some of our machines over here uh, but you won't really have to move through the middle of this so I'm actually going to bring out a wall and kind of uh, make this a little bit more blocked in ish um, as far as the design goes so uh, but anyways I know it's about wrapping up points a little bit past but uh, I know it is wrapping up point for this episode so we're going to end this one out here and then come next episode we will tackle part two uh, of our create system which is actually setting up the limestone and doing a little bit more uh, with create before then switching gears and moving on to another project for the time being so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the episode if you did as always be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out and i hope to see you guys next time so until then as always do take care stay safe and i'll see you guys then